You ready? Yeah, I play. I play anywhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I gave you some real work, man. Nobody's gave me some work. Even the GM for the Pelicans, like I am an NBA player. Bring them up with you. That's a great how question. Do you, how do you uh, handle that? 2020, I almost quit. Like it was still driving me to, you know what I'm saying, to be better. But mentally, I for sure was depressed. For sure. Time waits for nobody. At the same time, you gotta be patient with a lot of stuff. Again, you can't control what you. You gotta control what you can control. Hey. You wanna do game? No. Uh -huh. It's Pierre Jackson here, man. We clocked in. Hey, man, we clocked in today with Big Major, man. We got my man Pierre Jackson. Yes, sir. Biggest legend. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, go ahead and give us an update of what you got going on, what's happening, what you about the, your next move in life. Yeah. Uh, my birthday's this month, turning 31. Um, but I'm headed back to China, man, for the third, for third year. Um, Really looking forward to getting back out there and you know reminding everybody what I what I'm capable of and just hoping for a help, uh, healthy season, make as much money as I can and get back home healthy. Hey man, yep. tell me this: uh, how hard is it leaving your family in these times? Like, oh, it's ridiculously tough, yeah. man. Yeah, it's 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 the hardest thing. Obviously, you're missing a lot of the, uh, a lot of good memories with your kids and uh, obviously I'm recently married as well, so it's you know just trying to. Uh, be at home with my wife and enjoy those moments that I don't get to when I'm gone. But, you know what I'm saying, it's a sacrifice you got to make. Congratulations, so, man. Appreciate hey, that, brother. One thing I like about you, man, one thing that really caught my eye is how much of you a family. Man. Yeah. Like you got the whole family around you. You stay mm -hmm. close-knit. How big is that support for you? It's huge, man. Uh, just growing up, you know, I only had my grandma for real, and she was, you know, handicapped, so she couldn't really come to none of my games. Like, throughout all of my success, nobody was pretty, nobody was, like, really there to be there for me, like, outside of Vegas, so. You know, being able to start my own little family and have them, you know, come go across the world and stuff to see me play, is, is, that's big time for me. That's, that's the only thing I need for real. Yeah. Hey, yeah. so uh, tell me this. When you overseas, and how you stay motivated? Like, you scored every point that there is to be scored. You did every move. Yeah. How do you stay motivated? Uh, I think my next step was just, you know, getting over the, you know, the pride and your ego, you know, because a lot of stuff is out of my control. You know, I can average however many points, play the right way pass the ball, do everything. But uh, the politics don't keep me from, you know, being where I want to be at. So I'm you know, just controlling what I can control. And uh, like I said, at this point in my career, I'm, I'm on the back end, so I'm trying to make as much money as possible. Yeah. So where my kids ain't got to work if, I don't want, if they don't want to, you know what I'm saying? So that's the main goal. Go get that bag, man. Yeah, uh, facts, facts. Damn, hey, bro, this shit going good than I thought. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to be nervous. Uh, have you ever played against LeBron before? No. No? Man, so what's crazy is um, what happened preseason when I uh, my second my third year, you know we was talking earlier. I told you I tore my groin. Yep. Um, I was in my rehab and we played preseason against the Cavs and uh, I got to watch him work out. He didn't play, but uh, I got to watch him work out. I didn't play either, but that's the closest I've been to Brian like in the playing setting. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, man. I don't know how how I'll be on the same court as him on the other end, bro. It'd be really weird, bro. Yeah, hey, bro Especially they they do the things to where they make the guard switch onto him. So it's one of them things I wouldn't even know what to do. I'll probably <laughs> let him score just to be on that highlight. You know what I'm saying? But that that'd be ridiculous, man. Like he's like he's like a hero of mine, man. Ever since I started playing basketball, uh, organized basketball, that's like around the time he came out of high school and stuff like that. And he's been my favorite player ever. So and he's still doing it right now. So. Sir, hey man, we going. Yeah, I got. Hey, best player you played against, or you want to play against? Best player I played against. Wow. They gave you some real work, man. Nobody's gave me some work. Really? No, I've, I've went at it with guys, but nobody like gave me work. At this point, like it's it's crazy because like like at this point, like a level I play on, like everybody's good. You know what I'm saying? Like so, if you go to an NBA run with anybody over 30, pretty much. Everybody's good, so you're not gonna go in there and it's like, it's gonna be some days, three or four people ain't gonna miss, and then it's gonna be some days I'm not gonna miss. You know what I'm saying? So, respectfully, like I played against, I played against Dame, C.J. McCollum. Uh, I can't even name. It's a lot of guys outside the NBA I played against that's really, really good. You know what I'm saying? So, nobody ever cooked. I've never been cooked. I've went at it with people though, but I've never. Nobody was like, damn, I'm having a hard time with this guy. You know, so it's never been that. But uh, like I said, I played against Mike James, and even the guys over there, Shane Larkins, um, you know, the Will Clyburns, all the guys overseas that are, are doing their thing. CJ McCullum, I played against him in college, though. He was he was nasty. CJ CJ might have gave us the easiest like 35 I've seen. Uh, yeah, we played him at, at Lehigh. We we beat him really bad, but he had 35 light. 
Yeah, so I, I'll say CJ. I'll just say CJ. CJ's one of the better players I've seen. Even outside of the, you know, outside of like open run and stuff, he's just amazing at making shots. Hey, why you come, keep coming, uh, when you come back in town, why you still be coming to Desiree and stuff like that? Like, I think Desiree is huge, bro. We, we ain't really had that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now we have, like I play, I play anywhere, you know what I'm saying? I'm not like, I know a lot of guys have a hard time when they're like 6'8", 6'9", like trying to play at like open runs where, like inner city open runs where people ain't that good and they're just bigger than everybody. Like me, I'm small, so I can play in a lot of stuff. I can cruise or I can go hard and still, you know what I'm saying, still have fun. So uh, like we never had nothing like the Desert Ring, especially when I was like a kid in high school. So for all the kids and stuff to come back and see Pierre or if I bring, like I brought Montrez, GP came, played in it before. If I'm able to bring those guys into the city, they get to see them play at Doolittle. That's big time for the city, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and it's free, you know what I'm saying? So we get to see free professionals playing, not just local legends playing, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's big for all the kids and stuff. Even some of the adults get to see some, some of these players. I'll be excited coming, so. Yeah, facts, I'm, I'm glad y'all, I'm glad, like again, with the me social media and uh, media outlet just pushing that and getting their names out and just getting getting some good basketball for the city, I think it's, I think it's big. Hey, man. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? Oh, oh, oh. keep going. Keep going. We don't. We don't like. Gotta just talk basketball. Yeah, hey, man, no what, problem. What inspired the shoe collection, man? I heard you a shoe freak. Yeah, man. Uh, shit. Um, <laughs> I think ever since I can remember, bro, I've just been. Me and my me and my boy Billy just used to. Whenever he gets some shoes, I get some shoes. I don't like him, we'll trade. You talking about White? No, nah, his name, uh, his name Billy Turner. It's like my best friend since I was like in kindergarten, bro. Like ever since we was in elementary. You know, you get that that fresh pair of Jordans or whatever it is before the first day of school. Some he liked, I had it. Hey, let's swap. You got you got him for a week. I got him for a week, and ever since then, it just kind of started from there. And you know, I, you got I got like five, six hundred now. I sold a lot. I sold a lot. Yeah, no, I sold. I sold a lot. I used to be in the Jordans a lot because I used to play in every shoe, like any shoe, I would play in it, like any retro, all that shit. And I, once I tore my Achilles, it's kind of just, you know, I kind of. Superstitious shit. I just stopped wearing the Jordan 3s and the 4s and all that. I just went towards the more basketball technology shoes. And even still, I, I collect all those as well. I just love having. And then another thing on top of that, too, when it comes to basketball shoes, I'm shifty fast. So once my shoes start sliding, even at the second or third time wearing them, it's over. I got to get a new pair. I got to play in something new. Yeah. Throw them away? No, no. I give them away. Are they in my garage just waiting for a kid or whoever I need to give them to? Whoever wear my size, I, ch I try to give them out to them. What size are you wearing? 10. I'm hooping a 10, yeah. Same ballpark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I got you, bro. Some old, some old kicks you got, I just want them signed, brother. No, I got you, bro. That's not, that's not a problem. Yeah, I got, I got it. I really wanted to come to the house, man. I mean, no, we can, still, there, we, can, we, can still, we can still do it. We can that's still do right. it. Um, Better when my kids are at school though. Like wow. school starting next. No, nah, yeah, they they crazy. They gonna be all up in the <laughs> all up in the way. But uh, uh, yeah, bro, shoes has just been my. It's like a healing thing for me. It's like therapeutic for me when I get a fresh fresh new pair. Yeah. Hey, man, hey just for me being a fan of you, uh, you into music, man. I, yeah. I say like two years ago, you you put post a link on. Yeah, you, my SoundCloud. I yeah. Heard the whole tape. I, ah, he I, heard that. Yeah, I heard it, bro. <laughs> I said, you on the beat, rapping. That, that was, so that started with me and my brother Billy again. My Billy, he used to go to every country I went to overseas when I first started going. And uh, just one day we was in France and uh, I just threw a beat on. We just started freestyling. Like we had a whole tape of just freestyling at first. And then we just started messing around for real, just rapping about bullshit, bro. Yes, indeed. That's and we ended up making a tape. My boy, I don't know if y'all know, Tyler Gaston. Uh, oh, yeah, my boy. Yeah, Gas. Yeah, so he, uh, we went in there and like re we mixed the shit like professionally and we made the tape and I put it on there. It's it's too explicit. That's why I don't like right. put it out there. But it's fire. You want the BT uncut right. version? Yeah, no, nah, that's what it is though. We it's yeah. it's it's definitely uncut. It's definitely explicit, but it's fire. I definitely throw some bars and stuff out there. It's it's fun for me. My, my brother Billy really can rap, but it's it's fun for me. Just talking a bunch of bull, having fun with it. I mean, I mean, uh, overseas, overseas life is yeah. different than the U.S. Yeah. Uh, I heard on, I see you on Instagram talking about mental health and everything yeah. like that. Just talk about that a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. So with me, uh, I think early in my career, man, I think my first year coming out of school, like everything kind of hit me kind of fast. So I came out of Vegas, um, overlooked, you know, underrated. I had to go JUCO, definitely more underlooked. Uh, 
overlooked and just underrated until I had to, you know, I had to grind my way out of that. So when I got to Baylor, everything kind of hit me kind of quick because it was like a quick success story, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, man, I think that stuff just hit me real fast and I was on a real high. Um, I was able to play really well at a high level coming from Vegas, like that's huge. And I wasn't ranked at all. It ain't like I'm just around all these great players. Um, as soon as I got to Baylor, I'm around three, like three or two, two or three potential top five picks at the time. And it's like, I wasn't used to none of that. I definitely handled it well, but you know, once I started hooping and I, I definitely started feeling myself a little bit to where I felt like I earned, I earned that respect in the NBA to where if I get drafted, I just know the team gonna want me there to, to you know what I'm saying? And when I got to, when I got drafted, it didn't happen like that. Team sent me overseas. And that was like a huge blow to my ego, a huge blow to, you know, my pride and stuff like that. But motiv like motivationally, that it took off for me. I just felt like I'm killing everything in my way. So it was like a, you know, a plus and a, and a minus for the most part. Cause basketball wise, I was so locked in on proving everybody, even the GM for the Pelicans. Like I am an NBA player. I kind of got away from my family and like, I, I, I'll say I was like, I was like an asshole, bro. I ain't really care. I ain't really care much about if it wasn't basketball. I was so locked in at 22, bro. It was like, at the time I ain't know it. I ended up getting hurt. I had like, so basically what I say is, I had like five things going right, and that one Achilles thing was the only thing wrong. But I still was in the NBA. Uh, still was popular. I was making money. Uh, I was doing what a lot of people didn't do coming out of Vegas, like that stuff like that was still driving me to, you know what I'm saying, to be better. But mentally, I was, for sure was depressed, for sure. For sure, like I've been- the lifestyle change or what? Nah, it just was the, I just, I wasn't where I was supposed to be at. Like, you know, I was hurt, I was still in the NBA, but I knew, like once I started rehab, I hit the rehab and all that hard, just off of like, yeah, I'm finna come back and kill niggas. And, I, and then while I was doing that stuff, I was just ignoring the fact that, you know, my girl, uh, she, I was being mean to her. I'm not even noticing this stuff. I'm just thinking since I'm taking care of everybody, paying for everything, I'm being, I'm doing the right thing. And that's definitely what's wrong. I wasn't even paying attention to how people felt on how I was responding to people, how I was doing this and that. And obviously that, that played a toll, took a toll on me for like years to come. So when I eventually went overseas, being away from them, I, I guess I took that shit for granted being at home. So once I got away, it was like the hardest thing ever. So I, I think I reached my, so I don't know if y'all know this, but like 2020, I almost quit. Like COVID, I almost quit. I, I wanted to quit playing basketball, like sincerely. Um, but I was like, kind of, I still was on kind of a high with basketball. I, I just came off of averaging 40 points, um, COVID hit. And then once I, once I signed, me and my girl got into some stuff to where we split for a minute. And that took a toll on me as well, because you know, a lot of us, I don't know y'all background, but a lot of us, black families don't really stick together. You know, they split. Yeah, they split. Like, I, I don't know my dad. My mom wasn't around. All I had was my grandma. And to my grandma, my mom, don't know her dad. It's, it's just like a generation thing. And it's like something when, when, I, when I split. Yeah, and I would, that took a toll on me for real. Cause, and I wasn't married. So when COVID hit, um, the, the team I was on in Greece, Greece had a, like a certain rule stipulation to where if you're not married, if you don't have a marriage license or a work visa, you can't come into the country. So basically, I was gonna go 10 months without seeing my family. And that was like my breaking point right there. You know what I'm saying? Ideally, I had I was in Athens, Greece, bro. I had a crazy house. I was getting I was getting paid, like, you know, I'm getting paid to hoop. I was in the highest level over there. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I can't even call the woman I love to like have a conversation because she don't want nothing to do with me, you know what I'm saying? And then I wasn't gonna see my kids 10 months. They kind of hit me real hard and I ended up leaving. Found a therapist, just try to get on this journey to get right mentally to where basketball is, is temporary, bro. You know what I'm saying? Not so fast. I know once basketball done, I want to be here with my family. So that's that's where mental health really took a importance to, to me in my life for sure. Yo, tell me this, what type of therapy you go to? Like individual therapy, couple therapy, family therapy? Both, both for sure. Uh, I've been in that a little bit. So. I think when my kids get a little older, I'm gonna I'm put them in uh, therapy as well. Just. You know, there's been situations where we raise our voice and stuff in front of our, our kids and stuff, so they get to see that. You know, it don't show like, at the moment, but with me, like I know as I got older, during COVID, I sat my family down and told them how I feel about certain things. Just like my grandma and my sister, they ain't go to none of my games when I was younger, bro. That, that really bothered me. But at the time, I ain't know how to voice. As men, we don't know how to voice stuff. And uh, yeah, that's the biggest thing for real.
that's the biggest thing, and I, and that's what it, you know I voiced that to my my grandma and stuff like that. Like just I ain't supposed to be in the league, and I made it, and you ain't had no games like that. That took a toll on me. My mom, I knew my mom's situation a little different, so you know I I still voiced it, but you know that that definitely helped our relationship. My sister, you know me and my sister ain't as tight as we should be. You know what I'm saying that that bothers me. But it all helped to the, for the better because we all, you know what I'm saying, we're working on all that stuff we, that I, I pointed out. Also myself as well, so definitely helped. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Uh, you got anything else you want to talk about? We got a lot of comments, bro. <laughs> yeah, I got some. No, it's, it's like yeah, yeah. we, as black men in general, we kind of deal with the same stuff. We, and you ain't coming for shit. It's really, it's really, everything's pretty much similar. Who do we talk to? Right. Exactly. Right. Nobody to talk to. It's that right. and you gotta, you gotta take that step to actually wanting to find somebody to talk to. I don't know if y'all seen it. I'm trying to find another person to speak to. A, woman, black a black woman, yeah. I want to speak to a woman. Yeah. I, don't, I, I, have a, I, have, I have like a Hispanic man I speak to out of San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And I got a, a, you know, a black man here in Vegas I speak to. But yeah. also for my woman, I want her to speak to a black woman. And I want to, I want to speak to a black woman just to, Cause it's a lot of stuff we don't understand coming from women. We don't understand that, and it's a lot of things they don't understand coming from us. You know what I'm saying? Not for real. But communication-wise, like the pride and ego shit, it, is, it needs to be none of that in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of where. But with me in my situation, like we, I messed up so many times. So like the pride is like at all all time high on her end, and I get it. But that's stuff you gotta work through and be patient with. And that's all I've learned to be a little more submissive and stuff like that when it comes to your woman, bro. You the first in your family to make it on this level type of For sure. Okay. My, I'm the first one to go to college. Yeah, bro. Like, and that's normal for black families, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, the grandson or something is usually the first one to do something. And, and that was another thing mentally, like, it's a lot of pressure, like, knowing that you ain't, you know, ain't holding it down or ain't making as much money as you once was, you know what I'm saying? But... With me, you just gotta control what you control, and I know mentally that's the only thing I can control. So I try to, it starts there, sure. Tell me this, uh, having, being the first to, you know, elevate in the yeah. family, right? How do you deal with your family coming to you, your boys coming to you? They might have ideas or might not have things going on, but because you got things going on, you can't kind of go backtrack. Yeah. You gotta kind of bring them up with you. That's a great how question. Do you, how do you uh, handle that? Because you send them into That's home. a great question. It took me a minute, man. I had to separate myself from my boys. Y'all all familiar with my, my boys for real. Vic, Vic, one of my best friends. Billy, Billy been my boy since, boy, the sandbox, bro. But, you know, a lot of them, go, they kind of stuck out of, you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can only do so much, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, outside of my brother Tyler, he the only one married and happy and peaceful, you know what I'm saying? That's where I'm trying to get, he moved to Kentucky on us, you know what I'm saying? And I love it for him, because he's happy. And that's kind of where I'm trying to get to. I definitely used to, I felt like I was enabling my boys, you know what I'm saying? I, I'll try to put them on, it ain't work out. Yeah. I'm just paying for flights everywhere. I love my boys. Yeah. It's easier to hang out with your homies when you and your girl into it or y'all just don't see eye to eye, you know what I'm saying? So I'm spending way too much time with them. She ain't like it. I'm not seeing it, you know what I'm saying? Spending way too much time with them, too much money with them. Just So I definitely had to separate myself with them. I changed my numbers, all that. I definitely took like maybe three, four months away from speaking to my boys every day, all that bullshit, so. Um, if you can inspire somebody, go inspire somebody. They, and what does time mean to you? In what aspect? Anything, life. Time? Time, T-I-M-E. Shit, time wait for nobody, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, it's, it's, it's very contradicting, bro. Like, time waits for nobody. At the same time, you gotta be patient with a lot of stuff. Again, you can't control what you, you gotta control what you can control. And just listen, bro. I know one thing I didn't do was listen to Again, it goes back to my woman. I ain't listen to her. When I was younger, she said I was depressed. She said I was depressed, like I was going through something. Like I said, I ignored all that because I had so many other things going right, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, just, just listen to your people that love you, bro, for real. That's all I can say, yeah. Man, go ahead and inspire that young hooper, that grown hooper who's chasing their dreams. Go ahead and inspire them, man. Who Shit, hey, holla at Victor Bermudez, for real.
Hey, no, I'm going to tell you this, bro, for real. Anybody that hit me, because, like, I'm real vocal with my fans, right? I'm real vocal with my, friend, my fans, so, like, they ask me how can I get overseas. I can't tell you that. Right. I went to Baylor University. I was drafted. I was one of the best players in the country. Everybody can't do that, so I can't. I have. A, I had agents calling me. Right. I can't tell you how to get over there. My boy Vic Bermudez got that out the mud. And I don't know if y'all ever talk to him. Y'all can ask him. I. I tell him. Him and my brother Tyler, like they motivate me, because I know damn well if I had to do some of the stuff they was doing, I would have quit. I fell out of love with the grind for real. You know what I'm saying? So the stuff they doing is a lot of stuff I probably wouldn't have did at this age. When I was younger, yeah, but right now, there's no way. But they motivate me every day. It'd be hard for me to complain about certain things because obviously they would want to be in that same spot. So, again, just grind it out, bro. If you really love it, grind it out. The grind is, the grind is tough. The grind is different. The love of the game is still there, but the grind is different. So if you're in love with the grind, man, just stay with it. Control what you control. Yeah. Hey, what's what's outside of basketball that you you know you said you might bro I'm I just I just talked to somebody I'm I might try to get into like like uh like try to be like a Nike rep like a a shoe rep bro like I like I don't want to be around basketball like coaching and stuff like um I can't deal with egos and I can't deal with none of that it started at a young age now you know what I'm saying with social media and stuff but I definitely might get into I want to mentor you know I want to I want to be able to speak to guys about my you know, my experience with basketball and my, you know, my struggles with mental health and shit like that. But I think I want to be into like a shoe rep, bro, because you can still be around hoop, you know, still interact with the, you know, with the youth, with the NBA players or whatever it is and, and still be in the shoes. And I think that's something that would be pretty dope. Yeah, because I know all my, my Nike reps was terrible. I, my, all my Nike reps was terrible. Like I want to change the narrative of like just dealing with the big guys. You know what I'm saying? Because all the young, like me, my Nike rep, I had just a merch deal to where I just need merch, bro. Like, all right, just send me a box. That's it. Now, you ain't even got to, you ain't got to worry about nothing else. Just send me a box of whatever just came out. That's all I need. And it'll be, it'll be like, you know, pulling nails, like, out of the people's fingers to get, like, a damn box of stuff when you're supposed to give me this. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I would definitely want to change that. Be with the young, the small guys and bless them because Nike is a multi-billion billion dollar company. They not worried about an extra pair of tights. You know what I'm saying? I had to ask for an extra pair of socks. Like, bro, give me some stuff. So <laughs> definitely, I definitely feel like I can do something like that for sure. Oh, I think you should, bro. Yeah, that, yeah. Hey, man.